Hello everyone, welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah. Today, I'm so excited to be talking about zero waste and some hacks to help you live a more zero waste lifestyle, basically reducing the amount of, you know, what we contribute to landfills. I will say I'm not perfectly zero waste. I know there's some really great inspiration out there of people who have managed to dramatically reduce the amount of waste in their lives. Today I'm gonna to share a few easy hacks. These are just some things that we do around the house that could be of value to you. I know on a previous video, I talked about using reusable bags when you're getting produce instead of the plastic bag. So that's a clear, easy example, but I've got many more hacks for you guys today to help transition your lives into a more zero waste lifestyle. First of which, buy in bulk. This applies for both food and personal care products. I'll buy my dry goods from bulk bins when possible. So I've got some brown rice here, as well as a giant jar of red lentils. And this makes it really easy. I like the look of having a lot of jars in the pantry instead of like different bags and packages of stuff. It seals it off nicely. And a lot of times the bulk prices are more affordable. So it's a win-win there. This is a great way to help reduce packaging. And if you just use your jar, you can get a tear. When you're taking the jar to wherever the bulk place is, oftentimes you get a tear weight, which basically measures the weight of the jar. And then they, when they weigh it to calculate the price, they'll subtract that weight from it. But even if you don't want to do the jar thing, if you do have you know bags of stuff that you use, you can just reuse those bags too. That still helps. If there are certain products that you buy often that contain packaging, you could consider making those products yourself. One example of something that we purchase that does create a lot of waste is a like non-dairy milk. And or I suppose if you are a milk drinker, like cow's milk. But I have found that I really enjoy making homemade hemp milk. I'll just use hemp seeds and I just made some and I just put it in these glass jars here. And while it's not 100% zero waste because I do buy a package of hemp seeds, What's really awesome is that I can make, using just one tablespoon of the hemp seeds, I can make two cups of hemp milk when I blend it with water in a blender. I do add a date to help sweeten it a little bit, a little vanilla extract and some sea salt, and that is kind of what I'll put in it, and this is a great way to reduce packaging. Just doing some simple math with my bag of hemp seeds here, there are 33 tablespoons in this bag, and I use one tablespoon of hemp seeds for two, with two cups of water to make the hemp milk. And what's amazing, so in this one bag, that's 66 cups worth of hemp milk. And so with that, that's roughly, I mean, I, I'm not really buying the hemp milk at the store. If we are at the store, we're buying almond milk, but that's basically like eight packages of it, assuming it's got eight cups in one of the packages. So this bag, blending up myself can save what at least eight cartons were. Sometimes they even sell them in the smaller cartons, which I think only hold like four cups. So this is a great way to help mi minimize waste. I know I do also really enjoy Lara bars, and those are basically a combination of dates and different nuts blended up together. And they're kind of like a food bar, granola bar, except not granola, but those also can be made in a food processor. So that is an option to think about where you generate waste in your life and decide if it's worthwhile for you to invest in making it yourself. We haven't completely stopped like buying almond milk or buying Lara bars, but having the option to make them does help reduce things. And especially it can be nice too, to prevent you from having to go out to the store if you feel like you're, if you realize that you're out of something. These next two tips, these next two hacks are pretty obvious, I feel like, but having a reusable water bottle, so important. And then also reusable bags at the store. These can be a lifesaver, but here, as far as a hack, if you forget to bring reusable bags where you need to go, it's not ideal, but I'm guessing you do have some plastic bags around your house. I'll keep a few like wadded up and tucked in places where I might need them if I happen to forget a bag. So for example, you could keep one maybe in your purse if you are realizing you need one at different points. Maybe you keep a few in your car. I have a few extra in my car just in case they're needed. So you don't have to create more waste and bring in more plastic bags using what you already have to reduce what you consume. Next up, I've got a little Tupperware container here. If you're going out to eat and you know the portion's gonna be too big, bring your own container for putting your leftovers in. This does require a little extra planning. So if you find that you're going out to eat maybe more regularly, you could, I suppose, even put 
a couple extra in your car just so you have them prepared. But I always hate it when you've got leftover food and then it's styrofoam containers. Now, different restaurants do different things, but just avoid that waste altogether. And then you also aren't wasting the food because you can bring the food home and use it later. So this maybe does feel a little uncomfortable bringing into a restaurant. If it fits in your purse or whatever you're carrying, uh, that's great. But honestly, I haven't received any issues. Uh, some of the waiters and waitresses I've had even think it's really cool that I brought my own. And then you can also avoid some of the negative effects of some of those different containers like styrofoam or even issues with plastic. This is glass, so I can put it right in the microwave when I'm ready to reheat my food. Also, just on the topic of leftovers, eating your leftovers is a great way to reduce waste. I know that I've been here before, maybe you can relate, where you have leftovers for something and they're sitting in the fridge and then you forget about them, they're in the back of the fridge, they start molding and looking gross, and then it's wasted food ultimately. And with that, to try to help reduce food waste, I think it can be helpful for us if we do have leftovers to really give a dedicated spot in the fridge to them or a prominent position, trying to eat them up right away. Sometimes it is the fresher or more healthy foods that go bad fastest. And so if you do find that you've got a lot of leftover food that is at risk for going to waste, a couple key recipes I would recommend, you could, if you've got a juicer, you could make juice with leftover produce and just get every last bit of nutrient out of there before anything goes bad. For a dinner option, you could kind of make a leftover stir fry. And if you've got different vegetables and whatnot, you can kind of throw those in there, put a fun sauce on it, serve it with some rice or some of your favorite like rice noodles. That could be a fun way to use up some of these extra items. You could make little leftover pizzas and put whatever on like a flatbread or a crust and bake that. You could also, if it's more of like fruit and sweet oriented, you could make an epic smoothie with some of your leftover items. There's a lot of ideas here, but if you're meal planning, doing any of that, you could almost just think about like at the end of the week, what do I have left? Let's throw it in something so then none of it goes bad. From a paper perspective, Try to go paperless with any of your accounts. Try to reduce the junk mail you get as well. will prevent more from coming into the house, but on any of your accounts, whether it's like your cable or internet bill or health related forms with your bank, if it's convenient for you, digitize those. So then that saves a lot of paper and paper that you do get, feel free to use it for scratch paper so you don't have to use fancy notepads or stationery. As a general tip, I think glass is really superior when we're looking at the difference between glass and plastic. Glass can very easily be recycled and into glass again, it's also more durable, but plastic unfortunately downgrades after it's recycled, so it will never, a plastic bottle, even if it's recycled, will never be a plastic bottle again because the quality gets worse over time. So if you're stuck between a choice between plastic and glass, I feel like always go with the glass option. So if I'm buying nut butter at the store or other related items, go with glass. Obviously still recycling is better than not recycling items, but thinking beyond the recycling can be really helpful with a more zero waste lifestyle. Some other great tips, buy local if you can, especially with produce if there's a farmer's market. We're approaching summertime and oftentimes you can give plastic or other containers back to farmers and other businesses that you're buying from and that can also help prevent waste. Avoid freebies when you can. Do you really need that extra pen or notepad that a certain company is giving? Really think about what you need. Rather than getting individual size packs, go for a larger pack and then put it into smaller containers of your own if needed. Those are my tips to help you live a more zero waste lifestyle, reducing the amount of waste that you create. Hopefully some of these hacks were helpful. If there are any other hacks that I missed, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying the Minimal May series, we'd love to have you here as a subscriber. And if you visit our website, AbundantlyMinimal.com, you can actually pick up a free copy of an eight-step guide to start your minimalist journey, as well as a declutter challenge guide. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.